Good afternoon, everyone. This is Al coming to you once again, and I'd like to welcome you to Orlando. And folks, it's funny, when you come to Orlando Airport, I know myself, we came here every single year, at least once, twice a year, and now, of course, we live here. But you go through the airport so quick because you're trying to get to Disney or Universal or SeaWorld that you miss so many things. So one of the most commonly missed things at the airport is an amazing thing, and I'm going to show it to you right now. It's, a B, it's called the B-52 Memorial Museum. There's also a canine memorial plaque over here to represent all the canines who've done uh, work in the military and, and throughout history. But I'm going to show you this plane, folks. It is amazing. These planes are still in service. Uh, if you remember, um, this airport got its name, MCO, through Colonel McCoy, who actually saved Orlando. He was in a B-47, and it was going to crash. And what happened was he piloted it away from civilian areas. So they ended up naming the airport after him. So when you come through MCO Airport, Orlando Airport, that's why the designation is MCO. It's after Michael McCoy, Colonel Michael McCoy, who saved uh, everybody from not crashing that B-47. So folks, I'm gonna turn you around now and you're not gonna believe how large this plane really is. So stand by, let me turn you around. Okay, so as I say, we're in B-52 Park. This is right near the airport. So I'd recommend you GPS it. It's a little difficult to find but not if you GPS it. It's literally right next to the airport. So while I'm doing this video, you're gonna hear airplanes taking off because we're literally right next to Orlando Airport. So you look at the scope of this airplane, folks. I mean, I've never been so close to an airplane this size. This airplane has eight engines. If you can imagine, eight engines on an airplane. The wingspan, I, I mean, I, I'm gonna put some specs on. There's an airplane taking off right there. So. Luckily, I have my brother-in-law with me, who my brother-in-law is like an expert in military history and military hardware. So he's going to tell us a little bit about this B-52. Hey, Mo, how you doing? Welcome to the uh, B-52 tour. I made the big time. Yeah. So what can you tell us about these airplanes? Okay, in the tail section here, there were two 20 millimeter guns. So nobody could sneak up behind them, but they were remote control. Right. The other bombers in World War II and 50 caliber machine guns, and they had a tail gunner. This is remote control. This was amazing for the, you know, for the 50s. So now, what year did these come out, 1952? I'm not sure about the year they came out. I know it was the 50s, and they're still up, they're updating them all the time. New electronics, new uh, improvements to the engines, and see, the thing is, folks, you got to realize, if you remember your history, the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, MCO, or it was called Pine Castle Air Base at that time, I believe. And you have to realize how close we are to Miami, I mean, rather to Cuba. Miami is only 90 miles away, so you figure we're maybe 120, 130 miles away from Cuba. So we had about 120 fighter jets stationed at this air base at Pine Castle. And this was a strategic bombing wing, part of, um, you know, you got to remember the Cold War was going on at that point. There was a lot of tension going on. The big things at the end, those big, they're gasoline tanks. Oh, gas, wow, a lot of fuel going in there. Yeah, this was one of the longer range bombs made. And That's I, how they were able to go so far. They had these big fuel tanks. I think the range is something like 5,000 miles, right? Yeah. So, Mo, why don't you... They had the capability of being refueled in the air by tankers. Right, by C-130, I think, right? Is it C-130? Well, there's, there's, there's different kinds. Why don't you walk underneath, Mo, just to give a perspective of, of what this plane, the size of this airplane. There's other folks here. Now, you look over there. There's two people taking pictures right there. But we have Curly here with us today, too. Curly wouldn't mind taking a ride on a B-52. So, folks, this just gives you a perspective of the size of this airplane. I mean, you know, my brother was not a small guy. And you look at him, and he is dwarfed underneath this, this plane. Hold on a second. Here's the entranceway. What's that for? Entranceway. You're right. The, client, the crew to get in and out. So you had to swing upside down to get in there, I would imagine. You just didn't climb in, right? So you had to, like... You use these, these handholds. And you kind of swing in like upside swing down. In. 
So wow, so what can you tell us about this stuff over here? All these like jet ports and these are all the, where they put the gasoline maybe? I don't know. Yeah, probably. Probably over here is where they put the gasoline in. Into the tank inside the plane. Curly's trying to wet that tire, but uh, it's way too high for him. I wouldn't want him to wet it either. Look at the size of these tires, folks. These are like huge tires. Look at this hydraulic system. Um, you can see right there, obviously an American aircraft. I think we're the only Air Force in the world that flies them. I don't think we have any NATO partnerships with these. But you look at how big this thing is. Now, folks, like I say, this is... This was a re obviously a real airplane. It was decommissioned in 1984. I believe it was flown here from Kansas, but I'll double check that for you. And I want to say that this is really well kept. I mean, I've seen aircraft in different places that, you know, they're kind of weather beaten, but this one has been repainted. So there's actually a foundation. I'm going to show you the plaque over there that actually takes care of it. So what do you got there, Mo? What did you find? It's the Bombay. Bombay. This, this held 500 pound, 1,000 pound, sometimes even 2,000 pound bombs. Also, they had phosphorus bombs to start fires. I know a lot of the weapons we used in uh, Vietnam was, was World War II surplus, right? Some of it. The, the uh, South Vietnamese got them on rifles, carbines, Thompson submachine guns. BARs, which is, stands for Browning Automatic Rifles. No, but I think also a lot of the bombs that we put on these during, like, because they were just carpet bombing, which is, can you explain what carpet bombing is? Carpet bombing is you get a lot of these planes and you just bomb a whole area. Yeah, and I think it was during that time that they kind of just threw everything that they had left, every kind of surplus thing that would just make, it, make a noise and just do as much damage as they could. Well, that's why I said they used the different pound bombs. Right. Getting rid of everything. This is amazing, folks. Like I said, it's a little piece of history here, and it's something that everyone kind of misses. I mean, so here we have a grandstand back there, and this, this kind of gives you the dedication. Like I say, it's a very well-kept park. I want to show you the front of the airplane, too. And, I mean, what's really nice is how close you can really get to it. I mean, they don't want you climbing on top of the airplane, obviously, but you could literally go underneath it. You could really, you know, and I want to throw in that this is totally free, folks. I mean, this is, I mean, theoretically, it's not free because we paid for it with our tax dollars. But the point of it is, is that it's free. So this is part, when this went into um, retirement, um, it was part of the 7th Bombardment Wing, which I assume was out of Kansas. I think, the, I think these bombers have two home locations. Obviously, you could see with, you know, with the gasoline tanks and the engines, they have a very long range. I think the range is like 5,000 miles. And as my brother-in-law said, you could refuel them in the air. So theoretically, these could fly indefinitely, pretty much. So let's get a view of the front of it now. The admissions. Over a dollar, over, over a period of days. That's why the, in, in the refueling thing came in handy. What they, was the they crew? Could just get pumped. How many crew? There was a pilot, a co-pilot, flight engineer, a navigator, and then the, the guy that operated the 220 mm guns in the back. No bombardier? Yeah, bombardier, yes. Wow. This is incredible. So, folks, we have a plaque right over here, and this tells you right here... So this actually tells you, this is, um, I don't know if you could read it through the video, but it's B-52D, and this is number 687. It flew from 1957 to 1984, and it just tells you here that it came to Orlando. It's a little, it's hard to really pick this up um, from here, but it says the black paint of the Air Force 687 attests to many combat series sorties in the Vietnam conflict and the wrinkled skin to many low altitude training flights. So this is pretty amazing. Folks, you could, um, let me show you the front of this right here. I mean, this is just a great project. If you're looking for a, hey, if you're looking for a curriculum fair or some kind of project, if you're a kid or a teacher, you could actually, like I said, this is the park, folks. You could bring a whole field trip out here and there's benches, you could have a picnic on. 
It's an actual park in Orlando. So this is totally amazing. So over here we have the front of the airplane and you have a B-52 uh, flower bed over there, spelling out B-52. And down here, I'm gonna show you this uh, placard. So that's gonna do it folks. I'd like to thank you for joining us here today at B-52 Memorial Park in Orlando. Make sure you stop here on your next trip or either to or from the airport. It's definitely a must see and uh, part of history. Great thing for a curriculum fair, like I said. So um, drop me a line, tell me what you think. I'll see you real soon on the next video. Folks, have a great day. Enjoy the Christmas season. Mo's got one more thing to say. What is it, Mo? Uh, after World War II, the battleships had 16 inch guns. They took the barrels from those guns that were left over, put a nose on it, filled it with explosives, put a tail fin on it, and they used that to penetrate mountains, to blow mountains apart. You know, the, the terrorists these days in the Arab countries, they have hideouts in mountains. Well, now we can blow the mountain up. That's a bunker bus that you're talking about, yeah. right? Yeah, see, I don't know as much as him, but I know enough to get along to baloney my way through. But anyway, folks, thanks for joining us. This is Mo, this is Al, and that's Curly right there. My After lovable. 5 o'clock, I sign autographs. After 5 o'clock, he signs autographs. And it's our lovable Bichon Frise. Uh, my wife Carrie's at work, so uh, we're going to go pick her up soon. So have a great day. Enjoy your holiday season. Stay safe, folks. Hug each other. Tell each other you love each other. And we'll see you real soon on the Ow, next video. I can't stand you. Uh, see this guy? Got to deal with this guy all the time. Oh, well. Good help is hard to find these days, folks. Remember that. Have a good time. Take care now. Another bye -bye. thing I don't get paid for. What? What? You, you, you got a free tour of this. This is like, you didn't even know this existed. Part of your taxpayer dollars at I work. Get, I get less than Mexicans. Nah, come on. He's just kidding. All right, folks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.